We're gonna take normal phone footage and turn it into something that looks way more cinematic in DaVinci Resolve. First thing we're gonna do is hop into the color page, which is right down here. One thing I'm gonna open up is my waveform. Do that by clicking over here. Make sure that this little wave icon is clicked and go to waveform. With this first node, I'm going to label it. Now to label it, you can right click and go to node label. Labeling is not a requirement, but honestly, it's going to make a lot more sense so you know which node you have doing what task. For this one, I'm going to call it pry for primaries. So what the primaries stand for are primary wheels over here, the primary color wheels. If you don't see that, just make sure that this first wheel is highlighted. Now we're going to scrub to a good spot. I like to call it the hero image. That way we have our main subject that's going to be in the frame. So when we're making all these color adjustments, we don't have to play through the whole video the entire time. We can just look at what we want the main image to look like. On the primaries, I'm just gonna play around with the lift gamma gain using this little wheel down here by clicking and dragging. If you drag towards the right, it's going to kind of raise up the brightness in the image. And if you drag down, it's going to lower it. So I'm just going to raise it up a little bit, looking at my scopes to make sure I'm not going too bright, but also looking at the image. Because if I go too hard, it's going to look very, very blown out. So I want to try to keep as much of those highlights intact as possible. So something probably around there. I'm gonna mess with the lift. This is going to pretty much adjust kind of like the shadows with the blacks in the image, which adds just a little bit of contrast. And the gamma is pretty much like the spread in between all of this. And these are just very subtle changes that I'm doing. I'm going to add another node and I'm gonna do that with a shortcut Alt or Option S. This one I am going to title the curve slash sat. If you have ever used anything like Lightroom, this is going to look very familiar to you. So I'm just going to do a couple dots like one here, kind of raise up the highlights. And yes, it is doing a little bit of what I did in the primaries, but I just like to get a little bit more fine tuned in this and also to show you guys another way that you can be editing your image. probably something like that and I'm going to turn off this particular node and turn it back on to see the difference that I've made so far. To do that I'm going to hit Control D or Command D and that's turning on and off this single node as you can see it darkens that node. And then if you want to do it to the primaries, you can do that as well just by clicking it. And if you want to turn everything off and just bypass all of your color changes as a whole, you can do that by holding Shift D. You can just click this little icon up here and that will also do the same thing. I'm going to hit Z just to scale back to full. Now that we've got the curves, I'm going to adjust the saturation. And the way I like to do it is I like to push it and then bring it back to something that looks kind of normal, but has a little bit more vibrancy to it. Along with that, I'm also gonna do the color boost. Bring that up and then bring it down. So this one, I'm only going to have it just a touch there. That's already made a huge difference on this image. I'm going to add another node. This one is going to be a color isolation, so I'm just gonna title it ISO slash cull or isolation color. And I'm going to use the tool, the color warper. It's going to click on this little web icon. So to use this, I'm just going to grab a color. One of the ones that I wanna pull out a lot is going to be this blue on her dress. So click and then drag. Now I'm gonna drag it to the right and that's going to increase the saturation of the blues is going to add a lot more blue into the stress. And I'll turn on and off so you can see the difference it's made. And I'm also going to do this to the leaves. So get the green in here. And then on the color warper, the green is in the bottom left corner. So I'm going to drag it that way. And that's going to pull in a lot more green into this image. 
turn it on and off, you can see the huge difference it's already making. Now another node when I'm going to do skin. And just like we use the color warper to isolate the dress and the leaves, I'm going to do the same with the skin tones. I'm gonna to do something that makes it a lot more isolated so we can fine tune to make sure we're really just covering the skin tone. So to do that, we're going to click the eyedropper icon right here for your qualifier. And now we'll go and click on skin. Nothing's really gonna happen except it's going to kind of find it down here. Now to be able to actually see the selection, we're going to hit Shift H. Now we can see the actual skin tone that it's pulling. And it's not everything. We're just a big blob of good. So what we're gonna do is open that up by grabbing these little tabs down here and just opening opening that up. You can also use the width here and drag that if you wanna be a little bit more precise with it and adjust the center of the placement of it, your softness, which are these little endpoints. And then that's just the symmetry of your softness, but I don't ever really touch that. Open that up a bit. I won't go too much because I'm starting to grab her hair. Now we'll just adjust the saturation. Just a little bit, I'll kind of tweak that. Feather it out some more. The luminance, so the brightness of this color. Probably right there. Maybe a little brighter. There. Get the hand in there. Now I'm gonna bring in a little bit more color. It's okay, we did get some of our hair, but luckily it's not all of it. So, adjust this a bit more. I think right there is about good. But, as you can see, we have a lot of this weird fringing going on on the edges, very pixelated. Fix that very easily by coming over here to the matte finesse section and just by adjusting clean white, clean black, blur radius and denoise, we can get rid of a lot of that crunchy edging that we have going on. Something like that. So now while we have it selected and can view everything, we want to switch the scope from waveform over to vector scope. This is going to allow us to see where the skin tones need to lie to be proper, true looking skin tones that you would see. To do that, you would follow this little diagonal line. If you don't see this line, just go over to this little gear icon and right here, show skin tone indicator. If you check that, it will turn on. A lot of the skin tone that it is pulling is going a little hot and kind of moving over into the magenta, almost like a purple look to it. So we're going to change the offset over here in your primary wheel. I'm going to click the little circle on here and just drag it, click and drag it ever so slightly more towards the yellow and the red until it starts moving over here closer to the line. So just get a little bit over there and do keep an eye on your image because it can start looking a little too yellow. You don't want them looking like a Simpsons character. You don't have to be perfect with it, but I'd say about there is good. Click the shift H, turn that off and then I'll do control D. So look at that. Skin tones went from this bluish purple to a more natural, warmer tone. Now this part gets fun. We're going to add a depth of field, a little bit of bokeh and out of focus background to the image. So it looks like it was shot with a nicer camera lens. Instead of adding a new node, we're going to add an effect. To do that, go up to the effects icon and we're going to search for 
depth map. I'm gonna click, drag that right onto this little line. And when you see the little plus icon, you let go. And it's gonna add that in here. And you're gonna notice that the image becomes black and white. And this is just showing that anything closer is going to be white, anything further is going to be black. And we're going to adjust this so we can tell what is the background to make it more blurry and out of focus. Click on adjust map levels and we'll just adjust the far limit and kind of bring that where the more black it's going to be, the more it's actually further back. Because if it's a little bit gray, it's only a little bit further away. So if we can get as black as possible, it's the effect of the blur is going to be a lot stronger. And then the far limit is pretty much what I said, but the opposite. So we want more of her because we don't want just her arms more in focus than her face. So about right there looks good. It's okay that we're getting a bit of grass because that's how it works when you're focusing with an actual camera lens. And we're going to turn on the post processing filter. And you'll notice a lot of this little fringing around the edge. It's just getting a lot more of that data around the little finer details like the hair. Now that we have that, I'm actually going to check the invert. Everything that is black is now the foreground. Everything that is white is now the background because when we add the effect, it's only going to affect what is the wider part of the image. Click depth map preview off. That way we don't have to see the black and white preview anymore. Add a new node and I will call this lens blur. We'll look for lens blur and drag that on top of that node. And just like that, everything's out of focus. We need to connect this little blue square to this blue triangle. So just drag and drop that like that and boom. Now it's only affecting the depth map that we created. We turn it on and off and you can see the difference right there. Yes, it does look a little fake. To make it a little bit more subtle, we're just going to turn down the amount of blur. Go into the lens blur settings and blur size and I'm just going to drag that down just a tad. Just to where we can tell it's out of focus, but not nothing crazy. The more subtle you can be about your changes, the more realistic it comes off in the final image. There. Another little touch we're going to add to make her really pop is we're going to decrease the brightness in the background. Just like we did before with the primaries, we're going to do the same by pulling down the gain. So we're going to drop that brightness from the back. And also adjust the gamma just a tad. Not nothing major, but just enough to make her stand out from the background even more. The next effect is going to help with softening the skin. We're going to add a new node and we will look for glow. And drag that on here. I'm just gonna title it glow, just so I know. And just a couple things we're going to tweak in here. Uh, for the composite type, we're going to change that to soft light. Everything's gonna look very dark, don't worry. We're going to adjust this other thing over here called the spread. So I'll just bring that down, bring it up, just kind of see something that looks nice and pleasing. This is a very subtle thing and you don't have to do this at all. All of these steps actually, they're just for your own kind of flavor for your final image. I'm going to adjust the global blend. So I'm gonna bring that down to about a quarter. So I'm not really affecting the whole image very much. It's just something to give a little bit more character to it. And this is the fun part and something new along with the depth map that has been introduced to DaVinci and that is going to be face adjustments. Under the effects library, just type in face, face refinement, drag that onto here. Nothing's going to happen. What you have to do is click on analyze. And once you do that, it's going to find the face. 
There it goes, and it's going to track it. It's going to look for the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, the lips, and the jawline. And it's going to take all this information so you can affect the face. And technically, you can redo somebody's makeup with this. Do note that the face refinement and the depth map both take a lot of GPU power. So if you don't have that fast of a computer, I do not recommend using these two particular features. I'm going to turn off the show overlay. There, now we can actually see what we're doing. I wanna see if I can kinda of get rid of some of the shine around the nose by using the shine removal. I'll just turn that up and yeah, it actually did a little thing. Turn on and off. Sweet. We're going to drop down to eye retouching. Eye sharpening. The eyes are always the life of the image. So if you can get some nice looking eyes, it is going to look a lot better in your actual shot. So just do a little bit. I'll do some eye brightening. Eye light. Bring some more light in there. And eye bag removal. <laughs> Just a bit. Uh, looks pretty good. Turn off, back on. And that's a huge difference that it's been making. Okay, move on to lip retouching. Going to just add a bit of saturation in there. Also adjust the hue. This is where I was talking about. You can pretty much do their makeup in here, but I'm just gonna turn that back. Um, blush, let's see if we add a little bit what that does. Oh, not bad. Cheek. I'm not gonna mess with the forehead mainly because we have hair coming in there and I don't want there to be anything weird going on. Add some saturation to the cheek, just a bit. Chin, just to kinda match. To see our overall progress, I'll turn everything off, back on. You can see why I love DaVinci. I'm going to add some rays. We'll look for light rays. Bring that on here. Turn this brightness down a lot. Probably right around here. I'm going to increase the length of these rays. Probably like that. Might turn down the brightness just a tad more. On there. And I'll just rewind back. And yeah, you can see it's coming out through the trees. And really looks like we have some little atmospheric stuff going on with this image. To grab more attention towards the subject, we're going to add a vignette. We're going to add a window, window icon, and then down here to the circle. And now we're just going to stretch this out. I'm not gonna do a whole lot. I just wanna make sure the focus is on her. Go up a bit more. This little red tab right here, and this is going to open up the softness. I'm gonna do it quite a bit. I want a lot of feathering on here so it looks more subtle. I'm also going to invert this. So to do that, I'm going to click this button right here for the window and it's going to invert it. So now everything on the outside of the circle is going to be affected. Just like we adjusted the background, we're gonna do the same here. Bring down the gain just a bit. And a little bit of the gamma somewhere around there. Now we're going to add a, another node, but this node is called an outside node. To add one of those, you're going to right click on your node, add node, add outside. What this node does is it takes the circle that we made for the vignette and then re-inverts it so that we can actually bump up the brightness of the center part of the image. So it's gonna make her pop even more. I'm just gonna do that by grabbing the gain and bumping it up just a tad. Now you can actually see that the highlights on her palms are starting to get blown out. To get rid of that, we're just gonna come down here to our highlights 
and drag that down just a bit. There, and I'll turn off, back on. And just a little bit of bump, it goes a long way. And I will admit, now she does look a little bit oversaturated, so we'll turn down that saturation just a bit. So like 46 or so. There. I think the saturation looks about the same, but we do have a lot more brightness going on. Now one of my favorite ones is lens reflections. I'm gonna add a new node. Lens riff reflections. I'll just type in reflections. Here we are. Drag that in. Yeah, this looks weird. Just like everything I keep talking about, we are going to make it less subtle and adjust the anamorphism. Do that over here, really drag it out like it's being shot on an anamorphic lens. Really like that look. So I'm just gonna stretch, I'm gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go all the way. Global brightness, turn that up just a tad. Now going down to global blend, drop that down and we're going to turn it down a lot. I'm gonna do it to where we just barely see these things. And I'm gonna scrub back just to see how it's looking. And yeah, you see these lens reflections going on as if it was being shot on an anamorphic lens and they react to the actual environment. So it's not like some overlay you just throw on, you sprinkle on like you would in After Effects or Premiere, this thing actually interacts with your footage to look more realistic. One last node to add to finish this off, and that is going to be a halation slash grain. In the Effects tab, look for halation. Drop that on there. Everything's gonna look a little blown out. So this is kind of like the glow, it's going to add a little bit more of a bright pop, but it's going to oversaturate the image a lot. Counteract that, we're going to just mess with these dye layer reflections sec uh, settings over here. Just kind of tone that down. Pretty much everything. I'm not gonna like go all the way. I'm going to leave just a little bit to play with. Just a little something. Now the last thing is going to be the grain. There is a separate film grain effect in DaVinci, but while I'm here in Halation, they actually have one already in here. So I'm just gonna utilize that. You can do that by clicking on basic grain and click append. So now we're gonna have a little bit of film grain going on here. Again, this is phone footage, so it does have a little bit of a digital look to it. So this is going to not have as big of an impact, but a little something, a little bit of extra texture doesn't hurt. I am going to increase this aspect ratio all the way. And what this is doing is just stretching out that grain. I'm going to increase the strength just so you can kind of see what's going on. So before, this is what the grain looked like, just kind of like noise. And as I increase that aspect ratio, it starts to stretch it out just like anamorphic grain does. So we have the anamorphic lens flares. Now we have the anamorphic grain kind of going on with the image to kind of tie it together with this look that we're going for. Now I'm gonna turn that strength back down so it's not as punchy. I'm also gonna reduce the size just a little bit. It wouldn't be a cinematic looking video if it didn't have crop bars. You could drag some on, but they do have it built inside of DaVinci. Timeline, come down to output blinking. And over here, you have all these different aspect ratios to choose from. I, however, like to go with a 2.0. It's not as in your face, but still enough of a thickness to notice that you are looking at a more widescreen shot image. To click that, you have crop bars. We went from a basic straight out of a phone shot video into some cinematic looking footage inside DaVinci Resolve. Now this was just one look, you don't have to copy everything I did, but hopefully it gave you some ideas of the different things you can do with the nodes to make your video your own. Let me know if there's a certain look that you're going for. Maybe it's the teal and orange. Maybe you want it to look like Joker or The Matrix or one of those other cinematic movies. Let me know and we can break it down inside DaVinci to get that type of look.